David versus Goliath. This is the age-old question that jiu-jitsu tries to answer. Can technique make up for size? What happens when you put a 170-pound purple belt up against the 245-pound white belt? We will be taking a look at that in this video. But first, we're going to be taking a look at a short purple belt versus a tall white belt and a purple belt versus a blue belt. You guys really seem to be enjoying these rolling breakdowns I've been coming out with. And I get it. They are after all the best videos on all of YouTube thank you thank you but one thing that you guys have been asking for is seeing more rounds of me rolling with white belts so that you guys can see common mistakes that white belts tend to make when they're rolling so that hopefully you can fix it in your own rolling so go ahead and set down get your coffee or whatever you need to study and let's crack into this lesson Welcome, Agent 906. Your first target's name is Austin. We estimate him to be six foot three and 180 pounds. He's only a white belt, but be warned. We've observed him to be explosive and dangerous. But if you can take his back, we think you'll be in pretty good shape. Be careful, 906. Agents have been lost getting us this information, so use it wisely. Here he gets up to one foot and starts probing around, probably to try to avoid my Delaheva guard. A mistake that I see a lot of beginners make when they try to pass is attacking the upper body. As you can see, since I have gravity on my side, this makes it easier for me to attack my grips and cut an angle. And then grab his ankle as I push on his hip and block his other ankle with my foot to get the sweep. As I look to go straight into a guard pass he straight arms my collar and tries to hit a stand up he does a good job of locking his elbow out which prevents me from going straight into him so i grab his knee step behind his foot and hook his hip putting him in the turtle from here he's doing a good job of keeping his balance here he makes the mistake of dropping to his shoulder looking to attack a kimura as he does i drive my knee up against his hip and back step into side control grabbing his bottom knee to prevent him from hipping in i then circle to north south as i do he hips in hard the other way going into turtle so i step around and grab his hip. Escaping from side control into turtle is something I actually go for a lot, but he makes the mistake of keeping his elbows open, so I grab his collar and throw in my hooks for the back control. I then lock up a Kimura grip to chop his base out, slide my bottom hook across his waist to keep him in place, and then kick my top leg over his shoulder, grab my shin, hip out to the other side so I can wiggle through and triangle my legs. As a smaller guy, this triangle off the back is definitely an underrated submission. We restart in this super fun position to be in, bottom side control. He gets a nice cross face, but stays on his knees, which prevents him from putting decent pressure on me. This is a mistake that a lot of beginners tend to make. I bridge, create space, and throw my top leg over for a hook. He grabs my bottom shin to prevent me from coming up, so I kick my top leg over, locking up an omoplata attack. I grab his knee and sit up to complete the sweep, ending up in side control. From here, I'm a fan of getting up on your toes as that puts a lot more pressure on your opponent. With an underhook, I circle towards his head. I then shove his wrist to the mat, sliding my knee over it. I then step around to the other side, throw my leg across his body to go for the armbar, but he grabs his wrists together and turtles. So I drive my shin across his face, look towards his feet and grab his leg to chop out his base. He's doing a good job of defending the armbar with a rear naked grip. So I grab his elbow, bringing my hips to the other side to attack the other arm. We restart and again he grabs my upper body as he stands up which just makes it easier for me to attach my weight into him making it that much harder for him to posture up out of my guard. Here he grabs my collar and lowers his hips looking to circle to north south. Since his posture is so bent over it's easy for me to retain guard. All I have to do from here is throw my top leg over his neck and lock up a triangle choke. As he tries to roll out of it I just drive off of my shoulder and lock up my legs to finish. As he looks to pass my guard again, he has his back bent over. This is something that makes it a lot easier for your opponent to manipulate your balance. I block his ankles with my foot and hand, step on his hip, underhook his top leg, and hit a technical stand-up to get the sweep. I post in his armpits, lean forward so I can get up to my feet. Two small details that make this a good guard break are arching your back and driving your hips forward. As you can tell, even though he's trying to trip me, he can't. As he opens his guard and rolls to turtle, his arm gets trapped in between my legs, forcing him to tap.
Welcome back, 906. Your next target's name is Jason. He is a blue belt with a solid grasp of the basics. He is of Asian descent, and we believe he may have ties with the Mafia. So be careful, 906, and have fun out there. Here we start on our knees because Matt's be crowded some time. I grab his collar and slide my hips in for guard. He's doing a good job of keeping his hips low and knees bent, which gives him a little extra balance. He takes a step to his right before trying to flop past to his left, but doesn't clear my right hook, preventing him from passing. I grab his belt and kick up looking for a butterfly sweep, but he steps out wide with his other leg, so I come up to my knees and use a sleeve grip to finish the sweep. Here he turns away from me, going to turtle, so I drive my left knee across his leg, shooting my right hook in as I fall to my side and grapevine my legs to lock up the truck. Here he tries to kick off my grip, so I instantly release it and throw it over for full back control. I then feed his lapel to my right hand, bringing my left forearm behind his head, turn to my side and readjust so I can throw my legs over his shoulders and hip in to get the tap. As we tie up, he lowers his levels, but I have dominant grips, so I step to the outside, hit a single leg. As I raise his leg, he's doing a decent job of keeping balance, so I readjust my grip and turn his knee to the opposite direction to finish the takedown. As he tries to bring his top leg over, I step over it, walk myself around, and shove his knee through, passing into side control. I then grab a cross face and block his hip with my right arm to stabilize the position. Here he frames and inverts to retain guard, so I grab his gi pants at the bottom and waist, step off to the side to bring his hips off kilter, and slide my left leg in for the hook, pull his weight on top of me, and lock up a grapevine on his leg with mine, putting him in the truck. He then turns away from me, so I follow him up, coming up in three-quarter mount. As I step back to try to smash his knees, he underhooks my waist so I grab his elbow and step up high looking for some sort of arm lock but he pulls his elbow to the mat letting me pass into mount. I bring my right underhook up to his head, grabbing it, trapping his arm. I then grab his wrist with my left, shoving it to the mat, locking up the double wrist lock and rotating to finish the Americana. Here he grabs my legs and shoves his knee up against my butt looking for a pass. As I transition into De La Hiva, he hits a nice back step but I hook his ankle to trip him. Here he hooks my ankle, which is a good move on his part, but I counter by pummeling my right hook in and standing up with my pants grip. He tries to come up on a single leg, so I grab his head and step over his back. I try to slide through into truck again, but this time he pulls his shoulders flat on the mat, preventing me from doing it, so I let go. As I do, he turns away, ending up in turtle. As he looks to roll back into guard, I step over, ending up in mount. Here he turns to his side, so I post on his elbow, looking to trap his arm. He bellies down, so I get up to my feet. I then grab his hip and shoulder to pull him to his side, bring my knee behind his shoulders to keep him from flattening out, and underhook his arm and leg as I fall to my side. From here, as long as you push in with your bottom leg as you hook their leg, they can't come up into you. I then throw my top leg over his head and sit up to break his grip and finish the armbar. Good job, 906. Your last target's name is Phil. We estimate his weight to be 245 pounds, so avoid getting in a strength versus strength battle with him. Use your technique and cut your angles. You've been doing well, 906. Let's make your family back home proud. He grabs my collar but doesn't try to pass immediately, so I break his grip and hit a two-on-one. As I use the grip to try to hit an angle on him, he does a good job by dropping his hips to the mat, which makes it harder for me to manipulate his upper body. I still have an elevator inside his right knee, which opens up a lane of attack. As I try to drag his arm across his body, he drives his right knee to the mat, so I pull my hips backwards and use my left foot to block his right knee, hitting a scissor sweep of sorts. As I come up into half guard, he underhooks my left leg and does a good job of burying his head to keep me from flat him back out. I then frame on his neck to flatten him out, but as I do, he pummels his arm in for an underhook, gets underneath my hips, and as I push him away, he reverses directions looking to carry my momentum over for a sweep. But this position is a little tricky, and as he tries to come up for the sweep, I sprawl out and circle towards his head, putting him in side control. I then drive my hips up against his to prevent him from turning into me. Since my arms are crossed his body, he grabs my elbow and straight arms it, allowing him enough space to stand up. I honestly use this escape all the time, so I can't even be mad. If you're a white belt, this should go to show you that just because you're going up against an upper belt, you should still be able to have some success. Here he grabs my collar and knee, looking for a guard pass, but can't get over my legs. So I grab his sleeve, sit up, grab his armpit, and use that to shuck his arm by. He rolls to keep me from taking his back, which lets me slide into knee on belly. Here I get up to my toes, slide my right knee across his belly, and hop on over switching my legs for neon belly on the other side. Here he grabs my knee, probably looking for a funk escape, so I step out and drop my weight low to prevent him from rolling me over. This is something you have to keep your eyes open for when rolling with a bigger guy. 
From side control, I like to keep a tight cross face and get up on my toes, especially against bigger guys. This will make it really hard for them to use their power and turn into you. Here he's doing a good job of framing, preventing me from getting off any of my submissions. So I drive my head into his frame and then redirect it to take away its leverage. I then get up to my toes, drive my head into his hips to keep him flat and circle around to the other side. This can be helpful when you want to go for some submissions that you're better at doing on the other side. Here I bring my arm under his head and feed his lapel to my hand, and then get up to knee on belly, grab his lapel with my left hand, pinch my elbows together, use my knee to block his head, and squeeze everything tight to get the tap. We restart and he's got the right idea by trying to grab my legs, but since I'm leaning forward and blocking his grips with my hands, this makes doing that a little tricky. His back's pretty rounded here, so I trip him, putting him off balance, come up on a single leg, drive him backwards, and run the pipe for the takedown. He's brought his leg up to keep me from stepping over into mount, so I grab his toes towards his head as he pulls back, I let go and step on over into mount. As he frames on my hips and tries to explode, I slide my knee across to knee on belly and step on over into side control again. Here I grab his bottom knee and pick it off the mats to keep him from exploding into me. From north-south, I grab his wrist and try to lock up a Kimura, but he turns to the side, pulling his elbow to the ground, freeing his arm right as the timer goes off. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking, Jedi, with that amazing hair, how do you keep it from coming undone while you're rolling? First of all, thank you. Secondly, up until about a month ago, I didn't. My hair would honestly be coming undone every three minutes or so, and I'd have to fix it. But recently, I found these extra thick hair ties. I actually got them from Walmart. Not sponsored. But hit me up, Walmart. So what I'll do is I'll take two of them. With the first one, I'll get a nice ponytail going. Wrap it up nice and tight. And then with the second one, I'll take the ponytail and I will start turning it around like this to wrap it up tight. Kind of like a little donut. Wrap it around, grab it, and with my second hair tie, I'll go ahead and finish the job. Anyways, guys, that's all we have for the video today. I hope you both enjoyed it, and hopefully we're able to learn a thing or two from it as well. I appreciate you for sticking around until the end. Go ahead and hit that like button for some good luck. If you guys are new around here, I'm Jedi. I love jujitsu and making awesome videos about it, which I do every single Friday. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. You can also follow me on Instagram, Jedi underscore himself, link down below if you want to see what I do day to day. Once again, thank you guys for hanging out with me another Friday. I will talk to you next week. Remember, stay consistent and you, my friend, can do anything. Bye. Like I'm so bad, but they're coming up since six, making hits like ten.